Um, it's a presentation, but we are in journal club, so I'm going to be a bit more laid back and I'm going to just to go faster. But the idea of this presentation was uh, really to see how we could design. And actually the title might not reflect on entirely the journal club because actually I'm not going to give the full presentation. But all the idea was to, con to convince the, all these uh, management uh, people at MIT Sloan School that it was possible to design human systems for efficient uh, social interactions, meaning to do some things that are productive. Of course, uh, social interactions are productive, but the, the question is more, I mean, how do you organize that? And, uh, um, and uh, I just want to, to do a slide on this introduction, say that actually there's, a, there's something which is marvelous with open source is the, wow. the, the quantity of contributions that, uh, that have been done. And uh, I think we fail very often to recognize the, the strengths of, uh, of, uh, the, um, of, of these open source projects. Uh, um, uh, you know these people, uh, the data I uh, collected was uh, back in 2012. And uh, we know, for instance, I think the, the most interesting part is uh, the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web started in 1991. And, uh, and uh, the last time we could picture or, or map entirely the World Wide Web was in 2003. And there was, there's this famous picture that you, you can see with uh, one book on uh, network science by, by Mark Newman, uh, where you see the World Wide Web mapped in a, it's, it looks like a bit the universe. And this was the last time we could, we could map the entire World Wide Web. So just think about like, uh, we are maybe the first human beings to have, to have invented ecosystems that are so big that we cannot even measure them anymore. And open source has a lot to do with that because actually the World Wide Bear Web was open uh, was uh, open sourced by the the CERN in uh, I think it was uh, uh, thirty one years ago. Uh, uh, open source is kind of the same. Open source software is kind of the same in general. I mean now it has the, it has outpaced by orders of magnitude the quantity of uh, closed source code. Uh, not to mention that actually Microsoft has decided to buy uh, GitHub for a whipping eight billion dollars. Uh, can you imagine that? I mean, if you would have asked someone like this 10 years about that 10 years ago, uh, they would have said like, uh, forget about it. And Microsoft, they are not into open source. Now they are a leader in open source. So that's, that, I think that's interesting um, figures. I just also want to make a very little point on the, on the, 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 the uh, a paper that uh, I love, which is uh, a, a paper in law. Linux and the nature of the firm written by Johan Benkler at Harvard, and uh, Johan Benkler is, uh, is a very bright guy, a very interesting person. He came to this, uh, this to this idea that actually peer production is a is a new kind of production compared to the, the classical market and firm, um, as uh, theorized by Ronald Coase uh, in terms of uh, yeah, organization of the firm. So basically, a market is uh, something very totally horizontal where people just can go, can go buy and and buy and, um, and, and sell goods or services. And a firm is something more verticalized that comes from contract theory. The idea is that because if you need a resource, uh, um, a lot of uh, a repeated amount of time, you're better off contracting only once with a supplier and then get this person to work for you. And that's the way firms get to emerge. And Johan Bankler says, no, no, no. I mean, we have like, no, with the internet, we have something new, this is called peer production. So let me explain you a bit. But this is the outline of the paper I'm going to, of the, the presentation. I'm going to spend a lot of time. I think the, the, the nice ingredients with peer production is the, these two simple ingredients. Task self-selection. You know, we are millennials. And I think what we love is that no one can tell us what we should do. But actually, so I think open source is pretty much for us. Uh, we can decide what we want, what we want to do. And also, it also carries some, some responsibility. It means that we have to decide what is the, what is the most meaningful that we In a, in a mundane way, but more like, no, 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 this is something that we, that we, we care about, that we can, we can do. And then the second mechanism is uh, ingredient is peer review, which is obviously um, 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 uh, borrowed to, from, uh, from, from, from science. And um, uh, here, the study I'm going to show is about commits. And I really like the term commits because actually it really shows the, the idea and by the, literally the term that uh, Actually, commit is about a commitment. So you've done, you've written some piece of code and you decide at some point that it's good to share and you're going to commit your code to a, to a, to a collective, to a, to a common 
uh, to a common um, uh, common repository. And uh, and all the ideas that actually these commitments are absolutely fundamental to the to the the, the open source project and and to make them move on. Uh, so the the diagram, I think it's very simple. We say like you have some commits. So I, here it would be Alice and Bob. Uh, Alice makes a commit. Bob is going to be, make a peer review. So I mean, in, in modern terms, it would be like a, Alice makes a commit, makes a, a pull request, and Bob is going to read the pull request and merge it. And then Alice makes another contribution, and then Bob makes another contribution, and so on. And then Alice is going to review what Bob said, did, and so on and so forth. And all the idea at the time we published the paper I'm going to present, I mean, in innovation, people were wondering, all this could lead to innovation. How can we make sure that each commit is actually providing something new to, to the code and something positive, something that brings more comp competitiveness in, uh, in, the, in the code? And actually, we came with this argument in the paper saying that actually, we don't care. You can have a commit that is going to be bad, but overall, by accumulation and by peer review, uh, it's going the, the mistakes or the, the deviations from a, um, a reach of optimality and, and improvement is going to be corrected. So the idea is that if you, it's really the idea of community, cumulative innovation, some steps are, uh, you can think of that as a stochastic process, process, some steps are going to be not so good, some are going to be really bad, but they, they can be always corrected and we're going to learn from our mistakes and just make things better. Very hard for managers to understand that. Very, very hard. <laughs> they all expect that we're going to do things perfectly at first, which of course doesn't exist even for themselves. Um, I make a very little uh, uh, a diversion to the, this critical casket in social dynamics. Actually, that's uh, some papers by my advisor and also by a, a friend of mine who passed by MIT and Media Lab by the group of Sandy Pentland, uh, Ryder Crane. And uh, the idea was that we can actually model social dynamics. Uh, uh, especially in, um, in social media, but not only. Uh, you can see this graph with uh, uh, the newspapers, uh, uh, the number of newspapers after uh, September 11th, the number of anti-Arab aggressions about, on, uh, about uh, after September 11th, uh, the, the, the evolution of the Dow Jones after 9-11, and you can see that actually the, the re relaxation after this, uh, this shock, this peak, is actually uh, decreasing as a, as a power law. A distribution, a, a poor law decay. Sorry, um, I'm a I'm a physicist, complex system physicist. So you're going to hear a lot about power laws, and it's okay if you right. if you feel lost, please interrupt me. It's a power law that didn't put a log scale. How do I know? <laughs> uh, you can trust me. You just go and check out the papers. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I I challenge you to find a mistake. Um, you can trust uh, me. It's a power law. Is the <laughs> the statistical <laughs> physicist fallback? Honestly, like whenever somebody says that uh, you can challenge me on that, I I I don't bother afterwards. Like, I, I <laughs> no, but that's not even my. Why well, you my, should? My, yeah, that's what, no. You, you should. Yeah. This is exactly yeah. when you when you. <laughs> no, go true. ahead, guys. Go ahead, guys. I'm happy. I feel very very relaxed and chill out. So no go ahead. It's just a matter of time. It's already six, and I don't want to eat you all your night. But yes, if you want, let's have a discussion. Um, so you can also see, I um, also put this graph about the, the, the popularity of a Harry Potter movie. And you can see that uh, sometimes uh, it's not only uh, after an exogenous shock that you get a decay, but sometimes you can also have an endogenous growth of, uh, of popularity. It's more like a, a, a kind of self, endogenous self-critical mechanism. And then you reach a peak, which uh, corresponds to some kind of carrying capacity, and then the, you have a relaxation. Uh, also on the, I mean, it's important, you are all uh, all kind of um, uh, f physics guys, at least uh, working in a group with, with Mark. So actually, if you don't understand this formula, you can get back to Mark and ask tomorrow. But I can explain very quickly, the idea is that we, mo we, we model the, the dynamics. So that's what we are interested in. We're not really interested in networks. We're not interested in the, in the static structures of, uh, of, of open source systems and social systems, but more in the critical so the dynamics of the social, uh, the critical cascades of social dynamics. So it means that we have a, um, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, Hoax condition or Poisson process. Uh, it's a point process, so it's a discrete process where you say, okay, how much should I expect? How many new um, uh, activation of, a, let's say, so again, in our case would be commits. Can we expect in the future, given what we have, uh, what we have experienced before in terms of contributions, and also some exogenous shocks, so some activity that uh, that could be triggered by. Uh, 
by some kind of uh, um, event. So it could be, for instance, I, do, I won't present that here, but it could be, for instance, a hackathon or a conference. And we know that actually when people meet physically, this is going to trigger an increase of activity online. So the total activity, just to show the, the, the formula, is the total, total, total activity at time t is, is it going to be equal to the exogenous activity at time t plus at the endogenous activity, which is actually the activity that is triggered by effect of memory and of triggering effect from from the past. Um, so you have this uh, you have this f, which is the the um, the, the, the the triggering factor, and you have. Uh, the, the kernel, which uh, can be sometimes um, an exponential, or it can be sometimes a power law, or sometimes some, sometimes something in the between, it, it depends. But for humans, we know that it's very often power law distribution of waiting times before people do things. And actually, so the, memo, the, the, the memory kernel is- And um, here, and here, sorry, Thomas, and here you don't talk about, don't take into account the scale or the size of the system, right? later later uh, please please be patient um yeah so no not not in this, this formula we could imagine so i can already explain what's going to happen later it's actually the the, the size of the the, the 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 system is going to influence f so it's going to influence the, the triggering factor but thank you for the question it's a very good one you're introducing slide 21 or 22 i think so uh, just to have um, a, a, a very simple overview is that uh, you have uh, the simple without cascade uh, uh, dynamic, uh, cas um, no, no cascading, it's only just like priority queuing. So we have a very nice paper in Physical Review E where we fixed some of the problem of uh, this guy, Barabashi, have you heard of this guy? He forgot to, to cook up a, a, theory, a proper theory, so we fixed it. And uh, this is in Physical Review E. I think the, the magic of, uh, of Barabasi is that he can just get papers in nature and uh, PNS and science, and we are stuck in physical review. But yeah, I mean, no one is a, a genius, no, 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 not anyone can be a genius like him. Um, so what you, you know is that actually, if you have an activation at some point, um, uh, you get to, you, you, let's say you get exposed to a news and uh, uh, or like a news gets propagated in the in the in the in the, in the social media sphere. I'm assuming there's no cascading, so it means there's no no propagation of uh, so meaning that people cannot retreat. The, the the time between the probability of uh, waiting time before you get to read the news is going to be one uh, one minus t um, uh, one over uh, t minus t c at uh, at the exponent one one plus sigma. TC being the moment the, the news has been released. So it means that the decay is quite fast because sigma is uh, always uh, bigger than one. And so it means that there's a, a quick decay. If the case of a critical cascade, so it means that when F on average is one, so it means that uh, it, you get to be really in a situation that actually there's a, a one, one, uh, uh, one activation is going to trigger on average one other activation in the future. Uh, then you are in a, a, a critical exogenous uh, of, um, uh, uh, a regime and it's going to be one over t minus tc at the exponent one minus sigma, meaning that actually the exponent is smaller than one and meaning that actually the response is going to, to last for a very long time, actually forever, because, the, because when you have a power law with an exponent smaller than one, there's no mean neither variance defined. So it's a wide extreme distribution. And then you have critical endogenous uh, shocks, which is, uh, again, it's critical, but it starts, instead of having an, an exogenous shock, you just get by, by sort of a word of mouth um, uh, uh, princi principle is going to propagate and then build up up to a peak and then decay. And then in that case, in both, both sides of the, the curve you see with Harry Potter mover, movie is going to be according to one, uh, one uh, over T minus TC, uh, at the exponent one minus two theta, meaning that the exponent is going to be super small, means that actually your 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 cascade is going to last forever. Sorry, uh, maybe I missed it. Uh, in, in can I ask one question? Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, but what is the difference then uh, between tsunami and Harry Potter? Like, I mean, in a sense, we understand that there is a difference, but like that, the tsunami is more abrupt, right? Uh, and yes. that's why you also have. Uh, the difference? Okay. No, the difference is that because it starts, uh, because Harry Potter starts with a, uh, with no shock, means that yeah. it starts just like word of mouth. Actually, you're going to have an accumulation of memory 
that actually makes a makes it a, 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 a renormalized exponent to one minus two theta. So it's only in the process it's exactly the same, but the big difference is that one is like as a really a shock. So say let's say the Sumatra tsunami happens, all the news get out there, and then and then it, it triggers a, a critical response. The other way is sort of like more more starting like a viral, I would say. Okay. And then I mean, the question we were asking is like, okay, do we see the same thing in, uh, do we see the same thing in open source? And uh, the answer was yes, uh, to some extent there was, uh, but the idea is that yes, we can, we can find actually, um, uh, when you say you have someone joining a project, we can find that actually the, uh, for some people, the first day is actually the first, the most, the most producing, uh, more productive day. And then it's going to decay uh, according to a power law distribution uh, with exponent one minus theta. So it means that the exponent is around 0.5. And you can also have some situations where people join and actually they start very little and then they're going to increase their, 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 their commitment and their contributions and their commits up to a peak. And then this peak is going to, to, to decay. So it's very interesting because we'll see- understand, Thomas, on the left, you selected people that have their highest peak on the first day on yes. the right, you selected people that have their highest peak more than a year, more than 500 days after joining the project. Yes, you're right. Actually, we made a, a little trick here. We, we, there's a, a sort of a, a selection bias, but there, there was no way for us to actually fi uh, find, a, f find a, not, not uncover them. And the graph you see also here is important because it's a stacking, means that it's not like the exhibition of only one person, but it's a statistical averaging of 5,392 contributors. So it's so way less clean than what I showed you before. It's, a, it's really an, an averaging. And I guess I have another question on this, which is, sure. which is the, okay. And then like, do you see that those people, um, like, you know, like, do they exhibit, like, were you able to track the same contributor over and over on different repository to see if this is like a sort of a, of a human behavior trend or more? Mm -hmm. and, and like, you know, like, do you see a person having multiple peaks over time at different repo, you know, like that sort yeah. of thing? Yeah. Very good question. I, I, we don't know. We can, at this time, GitHub would not exist, and uh, yeah, it's very old data. You see, it was in my dissertation in 2011. So uh, yeah, GitHub would exist maybe somewhere, but uh, yeah, no, we don't have this information. It would be interesting. But I don't think that it's a universal or, or personal pattern. I would say it's probably, a, I mean, it would be more like, a, you know, sometimes you're going to 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 be involved in an open, in an open source project because you, you just want to fix something and you're going to just uh, put a lot of energy fixing the problem and then and then your involvement is going to decay naturally or it can be also the situation that you start the project and you're going to work heavily on the project and then and then you and then you decay you, you, your involvement is going to decay and then some other people uh, a very small a very small um, a, a, a smaller subset is going to be really more into starting slow like starting debugging maybe, and then getting getting increasingly involved. You see also the quantity of, uh, of for each graph, the, the number of contributors. So for the first one is uh, 2,562 contributors. And, and, then, um, and then on the right for the endogenous critical regime, it's way, way less, it's one third. And, if you, and you can see also that actually I, I, uh, I, I show here only only around 3,000 over, over 5,000. So it means that there are 2,000 contributors here. We don't really know that they don't have a clear pattern, which is, which is obvious. I mean, that we cannot, we cannot really have like clear pattern for everyone. So it means that in total, those people who are endogenously, critically motivated, I would say, that's only 10% of the, of the total uh, people. Uh, just one question. What does FITA say about the system? Uh, remind me, I, I must have missed that before. Uh, what it exactly corresponds to in the system? The fits, the what, the yeah, the district, the theta, theta, theta. Ah, theta. Um, uh, theta is the exponent of the. It's a. Uh, it's the, yeah, It's not the exponent of the power law. It's the. It's the. Um, the, 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 the. 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 The coefficient that actually determines the the nature of the of the the power law distribution. So the, the exponent is would be mu equal, equal one minus theta. But or one plus theta. 
mechanistically speaking, what controls it uh, at the at the at the mechanistic level, at the process level? This FIDA is uh, it's only a, it's sort of like only a statistics. I mean, the the reason why we use it is this way as a as a as a parameter is because when you have a critical a critical um, 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 a critical process, uh, a critical cascade actually. Uh, we find this this exponents to be to be um, uh, to be consistent with each other. So you go, you would have to say like if you have a if you have an um, um, uh, and yeah and it's kind of universal in the sense that you we find usually that if there's no triggering the 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 the, the exponent is going to be one plus theta and if it's uh, if it's a, a critical um, a triggering. There would be the exponent would be one minus theta, and it's always like this. And the, and theta is always around 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Okay, so I, I'm not into claiming anything universal here, but it's something we tend to find in many in many different systems, and you will see that later. Camille has a question, uh, but I, I, I was not sure to understand the question. <laughs> yeah, it's because we don't speak the same language. I'm sorry. Um, so ah, sure. actually, maybe Leo has answered it or not, but. Okay, I'm not sure it's a very le relevant question, but um, I was uh, studying a uh, system in, in like for, well, anyway, for health system stuff. Uh, and I was wondering if there is any looping effect uh, taken into consideration in what you're presenting. And one example is like, imagine, is like, for example, does, does your analysis takes into account that the fact that maybe one tsunami has the ability to create more tsunamis in itself so that like the creation of one tsunami would actually like create more tsunami yeah. which will create more tsunami or reverse like if one tsunami happens has the ability to create less tsunami <laughs> i don't know yeah no but, well, so sorry here i didn't say i was not really clear well it's google trends so it was the actually the the, the social media response or the search response of tsunami oh, so okay. nothing to do with the the natural process but this is a very good interest interesting question the, your question is exactly it's not a question about looping it's a question of uh, critical cascades or cascading so it means that if yeah. one event is triggering another one it's not a question of uh, of looping it's a question of, of cascades so yes the answer is absolutely about that. yeah so yeah actually, and i was the, like and going back to the original source like this is something we see with the uh, supply chain and medicine it's like one event that can affect there is like a yeah uh, um there are you have loads of medicines and then events that happen but sometimes one event can have an impact on the original one i don't know if i'm not very clear but yeah <laughs> no but we 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 this is no this is a very good question actually you you can the question is whether there are positive feedback loops in the in the in the process. So it means that there's also sort of like something that is auto auto um, uh, just self sustained yeah. and would be let's say if two people like uh, Mark and Thomas are working together and the fact that Mark is working is is going to reinforce my my mm. my motivation to work. The answer is absolutely mm. yes. Mm. Uh, whether we can whether we can consider that as a, yes, from a system a system design or system dynamics of, uh, a perspective, which is used in uh, operational research usually, uh, yes, that would be that would be the case. It would be something like a, a positive feedback loop. Yeah. Okay, this, but this weekend, so this, this is weekend. not this is not in the the cascade is different from from that. I'm no, it's, uh, <laughs> no, it just touches us that we could not moti we could not uh, we could not model that properly. We tried hard, but we didn't never we never found a proper uh, like enough support uh, to to report on 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 this this uh, this this aspect. Maybe it would be possible now, but at the moment it's not. Okay. At least Thank no you. one. I don't. I know of no one. Well, I, you know, uh, in in research, usually whether it's economics or. Or physics, as 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 soon as you start introducing feedback loops and endogeneity, uh, you are getting in a lot of trouble uh, because <laughs> it's hard and uh, and because because scientists they love causality and when you say oh everything is just like uh, doing going spontaneous, I mean you you're just getting into trouble. Uh, but it's feasible. I mean I, there's no there's no lack of theoretical background and and frameworks for that. Okay, I'm just moving out if you don't mind because uh, I was asked to speak for 30 minutes and I'm not even quite uh, quite there. Go ahead. Uh, and 
So what we looked at, um, if I end up having time to, to, to comment on the Physica A paper, this has some importance. And what we looked at is actually, we looked at data from a, a, a randomly selected data set of, of, of projects from somewhere from, uh, from GitHub, some other way from SourceForge, but we were very careful to, to take a, 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 a random distribution of, uh, of projects. While most, most research projects, most research, they, they tend to select the most active projects. And we didn't want that. We wanted to see what's going on also with small projects, with uh, five people, something like that. So we found that actually the distribution of the, of the, the project size is, uh, is as an exponent mu of um, uh, 1.4, 1.5 uh, approximately. So it means that actually, interestingly, if we select uh, an, an, a randomly projects on, in open source, we will find that actually the distribution is more, is, is more balanced towards the small projects than the, the, the big projects compared to a zip slow, for instance, which is uh, as an exponent of one and which is more open, which is more um, uh, heavy tail. And uh, the zip slow is the one you find for distribution of wealth and so on. So we looked at um, uh, 164 projects uh, with uh, randomly chosen with five to one, uh, 1,067, uh, 678 contributors. The quite, I think the biggest is Apache, if I remember. If I can just make a comment on the slope, Thomas, uh, I think there's also the fact that it's completely free to make a small project even if it never ends or never leads anywhere, right? And, and so if you were to, yeah. to prune out projects by only keeping the one that actually are real projects that lead to actual development, et cetera, maybe you would have something more similar to a wealth distribution. Or no, be, uh, yes, uh, no, because we checked that, uh, we checked that uh, the projects were still kind of alive. So okay. we have a bit of sanity check if you want. That uh, was my add, colleague, yeah. Good. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, sure. Um, there's a, I don't know if you've read the, there's a paper from Sasha Malojevich on team size in science. And she has a distribution that's really similar to yours. Mm -hmm. Not quite as much of a hook on the left-hand side. And she found that, hers is because of the hook, you need to add another one. Basically, if you add a Poisson uh, function to that as well, you can get that uh, distribution. I'm very happy if you share it in the, uh, on the chat. Yeah, I'll share it in the chat. It's really yeah, cool. Yeah. Great, thank you. Okay, so what we found is, which is very, very interesting, and now I'm really getting into the core of the paper. Sorry, I, I was so long in the introduction, but you have good questions, so I think I have an excuse. Um, if you look at in the time domain, what is going on, we have the activity on the left on in red, which is equal to the number of commits per Per time, per, per time window of five days, let's say. And then on the right, the uh, uh, right scale active contributors are in green. And what you see very clearly is that if you look at the, each time, the, the green is increasing a bit, actually the, the activity is going to spike like crazy. So this is no, Mark, this is okay. There's no log scale. It's a very simple graph. I know it's very rare that I put a graph with no log scale, but there's no log scale, very simple one. But what we find is that no, because I, I I see you just concentrating on the screen and I'm like, no, no. And so so what we found is that if you take the log of the, the activity versus the log of active contributors per five days bin, what we find is actually there's a super linear regime with a, so a beta uh, approximately equal to four over three. And this is much uh, much higher than uh, the uh, linear regime. It's, it's really growing. Uh, Growing uh, uh, with uh, as a power law, and um, and uh, so the the formula we have is that a is equal to c at the power of beta with beta equal uh, roughly four over uh, over three, and so this is nice because this is the first empirical demonstration of Aristotle: the world is more than the sum of its parts. I have a yeah. remark. If you go back to the uh, sure. you go brought the data a lot, and for once I would love to see the x-axis on the right not logged. Because I have the impression of, that there is a saturation above 0.9, uh, and I'm, I, you know, I, I would love to see the exact data because something I see with with other contexts is that there is a, a, a linear regime, a, a yeah. super linear regime before a certain size, but above a certain size, you reach some kind of saturation. 
No, uh, very good, very good question. I'm go I'm getting to that. Okay. And, uh, okay. and yes, there is a saturation actually. And uh, okay. very, very nice. You give me a new idea for an extension of this paper. But is it actually? <laughs> but, but actually, coming back to the to the link to the link with the book, right? Where they were discussing this um, Metcalfs and Re Reed's laws. Do you think yes. it can be due to this? Yes. Or uh, yeah, yeah I, well, exactly. When you were talking about this Reed's law, I never heard it on this name, but I think that was like, oh, this is nice. Uh, 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 Lub Lubov is actually uh, no Tupikina. What is your your first name? Tupikina? Yeah, Lubov. 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 Yes. Oh, sorry, I, I was not sure. <laughs> no problem. It's uh, actually oh, thanks for introducing my talk. Yes, I think it's exactly the same. Yeah, not okay. exactly, but uh, no. Many but, people really don't like and criticize Reed's law apparently because they say yeah. it, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, but, uh, yeah, 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 sure. Very good point. <laughs> Let me go on on that. Uh, actually, we got uh, we got some criticism as well. So. But it's okay, science is also about being uh, controversial. We should stick to our ideas. So what we found is actually that one plus one in the context of open source uh, is equal to, point, to 2.5. So one, uh, one plus one contributor is going to contribute 2.5. So we, this is the law of, uh, the law of uh, Aristotle, the world is more, more than some of its parts. We believe it's first time it's been demonstrated empirically seriously. But this is not the most interesting part. The most interesting part are the underlying mechanism. So let me just make, oh, sorry, what I do, too bad. Uh, no, here. Does that uh, the, one plus one include everybody that quits? Sorry? Does that one plus one include everybody that drops out? Or are you just keeping the people that survive? No, we just look at if you take a time being, we, we don't care about whether people survive, stay, quit, whatever, or, leave, or join. It's just like you take a side of time, bit of, uh, time being of roughly one week, and you look at the number of active people, and then you look at the number of commits that were produced and then you find that it is low. And uh, okay. so we, we looked at two mechanisms. Actually, one we could not, we couldn't read really demonstrate empirically and the other one we believe it's uh, the most probable one. Is, uh, uh, one is the interaction mechanism. That's the beautiful one that Lyubov was talking about and dreaming of saying that actually, yes, when Mark is working, it makes the bus so excited that it's going to, in, 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 uh, contribute even more and so forth and so and then we can also actually not only Mark and I can we go go to Robert and Lubov and other and then we are like this super hippie hippie community and we are all so happy to co to contribute that is creating so much uh, so much things yes this is probably happening but actually we don't have a proof for that but the other one which is the most a bit more easy to understand is actually the large deviation mechanism it's uh, uh, the idea that actually the, the thing that is a bit uh, uh, um, uh, counter in, intuitive in what I said before is that when we, I tell it one plus one is equal to 2.5, what you want to expect is that each one is going to produce 1.25. Uh, and then you sum up and you say, oh, actually Thomas and Mark have contributed equally. And, and the, the, the margin anymore that they are produced is because they interacted. No, not really. Actually, I'm a lazy guy, so I produced actually 0.2, and uh, and Mark produced 2.3, and that's exactly what happens. Actually, the distribution of uh, people's contribution in open source, we know that for we've known that for for decades is actually heavy tail. So any project you look at, the the, the distribution of people's contribution is going to be heavy tail, and uh, and and really heavy tail. So it means that, I mean, in any project you have a minority, a core of people who are actually contributing. 90% of the project, and then you get 10%, 90% uh, of the people who contribute the remaining 10, like a Pareto law. I don't know if it's 90 or 80%, but you, you get the idea. So, so the, the question, I mean, in terms of management, uh, I don't know when we have to stop, but the idea is like when, the, the idea is really that actually you should, when you consider a community, you should never exclude the, the, the little hands that are doing the, the small fixes, because actually these people are important to the, to the project, even though they don't contribute most. And that's an important lesson for, for community management. So what we looked at, uh, uh, that's nice because it's super nice physics. That's one of, of uh, reviewers who actually, who actually uh, suggested that we made a little, a little uh, detour for, by, uh, to, to the super radiance-like phenomena. And, and this is really cool. It's like you think about like a, a, a source emitting some, uh, some, um, some, uh, some, uh, some waves and uh, actually, um, 
you get uh, you get uh, when you actually when you densify uh, the, the 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 particles that are emitting, actually they are going to become uh, isotropic. So they are going to actually exhibit a coherence in the in the in the emission of uh, of waves, and um, and that's we think that's really something comparable. So if you think that oh actually if people are close enough and you get critical mass of enough coherence between people, actually they are going to do things in a way that is organized that gets to be organized or coherent, and then they're going to produce more maybe. So that's that was one of the suggestions by the review, but I find it beautiful because actually it's it's really going back to to fundamental physics. But we need we did not really go much much further than metaphor at this stage. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, looks like yeah. So what we looked at is that actually first thing we wanted to show actually there was a relationship between people's contribution and actually and the, the dynamics of people contributions and the, the power law distributions of activity and actually the, the this and try to, to validate this mechanism of uh, the world is more than some of its parts. And uh, so the first thing we looked at is that we say, okay, what is the contribution of each, con uh, the, the total amount of contribution by each contributor? And what we found is that actually the distribution of the, as I said, of the, the, the contributors uh, the, the contributions by contributor is actually a, a power law tail distribution, only the tail, um, um, uh, with uh, with mu uh, 0.92 smaller than one. And also that's interesting because it shows that, uh, as I said, the minority of people are, are contributing uh, the most of the most of the project. And so the sum of all contributions are actually controlled by one, for one project is controlled by one or a few large uh, largest contributors. And uh, uh, so, so that's the the idea, and we 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 try to to link that with uh, with the the distribution the 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 beta that you you can you see there the beta there, mm -hmm. and uh, what we found is that actually um, you can uh, we can the the law that we found is that from u smaller than one. It's a bit complicated to explain, but from u smaller than one, actually you get a renormalization, and uh, and there's a relationship between the between the the, the instant uh, um, a relationship between activity and contributions, and actually the 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 the, the final sum of contribution to to people by people in in the end, and this relationship is is equal is of the 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 form of beta is equal one one over mu. And that's a uh, renormalization uh, uh, thing. So, but if you, only if when u is smaller than one, so only when you have a, when only when you have a, um, uh, um, uh, a heavy tail distribution of um, of, uh, of of contribution per per per, um, per per contributor per open source developer. If mu is is larger than one, actually beta uh, gets to be equal to one. So. So that's a proof, sort of, of the large, de the, the large deviation mechanism. The large deviation mechanism uh, holds means that if you, if uh, if actually people contribute in a heavy tail distribution manner, actually you're going to be a situation that if you look at uh, the, the project by slice, you're going to see this productive burst. Ah, okay, really, I'm doing all wrong. So here is the. Uh, so. Um, so we say, okay, we want to we want to test that empirically. So what we needed to actually test empirically was to measure mu and uh, and um, and, uh, and and uh, and beta and uh, and the, what we found is that. So now I have a blank on what. Let me just check. Oh, okay, this is the distribution of activity per developer per five days bin. So before we were looking at the aggregates so of all the activity per, per five day bin by all the, the, the developers. And here we're looking at only by the distribution of activity per, per developer per five day bin. And what we found is that uh, gamma 
uh, is equal to 1.28. So it means that the distribution per five time bin of people contributing is not that heavy tail. Makes sense because in five days you cannot really have like people do a, a giant streak and, and really all pace all the others. So you get some large deviation, but it's not that large. And what we found is that actually from the theory, um, you, we found that actually mu is equal to one over gamma and uh, with gamma is equal to, is between one and two. And then we found that, uh, that it holds uh, empirical. And that's the, this, the, the results that we found. I mean, okay, it's open source. It's a bit, uh, it's about a bit, um, a bit uh, uh, blurry, but we, we looked at, um, uh, we looked at the gray area where that we believe is the validity range where, where we expect that beta should be between one and two, while gamma should be on between one and two. And this gray area show where we, we see that uh, 184 uh, points over 390 values are in this validity range. So it's not perfect. It's not like, I mean, it's not, not a science paper because actually the data is still a bit uh, not that good. So we have sort of like a mild a mild um, uh, 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 evidence for the interaction mechanism, and we um, and uh, we uh, and on the contrary, I think for um, I think it's there one over. We looked also at one over mu uh, versus gamma, and we also found kind of the same the same value, not so exceptional. So we have like a limited uh, limited support for that, but we believe it's it's I mean still quite good in a sense. Um, and we also have evidence for critical cascade. So which is this one, uh, one over mu equal to gamma, which is equal to four, uh, to, to, to four over three. So that's what we, what we found. We looked at, we still looked at uh, the statistical confidence beyond the, the graphs. And we, 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 we found that actually the, the fit were not, uh, were quite good. So for beta, we fitted beta by regression. And we found that the p value was smaller than 0.1. It's not, it's not great, but it's not that bad. And uh, L square was quite high. And uh, same thing with uh, mu and gamma, we fixed fitted by maximum likelihood estimator. And here we found like quite uh, quite strong support. Okay, uh, I think um, um, let me just conclude there and uh, and say that the the main resource is that like we really see nonlinear super productive dynamics and peer production. So that's the that's something that you can just see by yourself in the graphs, and um, I think for management it's a bit uh, it's a bit uh, uh, unsettling because a manager is a management is a science of control, <coughs> and you want everyone to work eight hours per day, and then feel this happy routine work. I mean, open source is nothing like that. It's more like nothing happens for a while, and then suddenly, suddenly you have a burst, and and people work like crazy for. For, for, for one week because there's a release or because there's just like a, the, the excitement of doing a new module or solving a new problem. And that's what we, we show. Then we have this, uh, we see this critical phase transition that actually the dynamics as we see them, they, are, they remain delicately poised between order and disorder. And that's something nice for managers because they always love to talk about disorder and chaos. And here we have a situation that actually, yes, open source is something between order and, and disorder. And then we have these two mechanisms involving critical cascades, interaction cascade, base cascades, and large deviation triggering uh, mechanism. And uh, 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 the first uh, conclusion is that actually you get heterogeneous individual contributions. So you get a quant quantitative heterogeneity with heavy tail distribution of total activity per developer. And you get also qualitative heterogeneity uh, with this exogenous versus endogenous types of critical contributions. It means that some people are going to be, have like completely di different dynamics in the project compared to others. So I, I think I'm going to stop here. Uh, there was at some, uh, I don't want to do much longer, but I want to just touch very quickly on the Physica A paper. Actually, all these results were heavily challenged by someone we know very well, is Frank Schweitzer. We actually at the time was uh, at his office um, at the other side of the door of the corridor of our office at ETH Zurich. And, um, and they were really not happy with our results. So they cooked up new results and, uh, and, uh, and then they said we were wrong. And then, uh, and then, we, and then we, 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 we wrote a paper in Physica A showing that actually the way they were proceeding to showing that we were wrong is, uh, is, uh, 
it was unfair. So uh, uh, if you want uh, an example of, uh, of uh, two professors fighting against, against each other and, uh, and uh, lashing out at, the, at each other, I really, I really encourage that you look at the papers. It's a, it's a good example of, uh, of uh, scientists in complex systems that are, that are just like lashing out each other. Uh, the, 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 point, the point I want to make is, uh, is that um, uh, uh, on this Physica A paper, um, there are a couple of things that I think are interesting to know. Is first that uh, the way they, they, they discussed our results, they actually uh, to, they dismissed us of results. So the paper is called, sorry, it's called Aristotle versus Ringelmann. And that's, that's actually the group of functionalizer was finding that actually in open source, you see this, uh, this, um, uh, this effect of uh, Ringelmann effect means that the more people are, are actually active, the less, uh, the less productivity. Uh, it means that actually you have coordination costs that are building up and then, uh, and then actually at some point people stop, uh, stop, uh, well, they don't stop, but the productivity is reduced. And so we had this, uh, so functionalizer was more into into Riegelman and we were more into Aristotle and and there was this debate. But oh. so you mean debate because I guess it was data based as well. Like they, they had the data set where they found their results, right? Yes, but they changed the definitions on which they were challenging us. So this is really bad science in a way. So if you want to change the results of someone you you just stick to the to you stick at least to the same to the same principle. And they were also as I, I explained you when we, we talked is that they also and that's a mistake, in my opinion, it's because they they looked at only the largest projects. And oh, and it reminds me that I shopped, uh, forgot to show you something in the in the in the slides. I'm going to go back to that. And then they found from the largest projects that actually yes, there was no so much of a, of a super linear effect. Actually, they found it was negative. But actually, they made a lot of pruning in the data. So they they looked at the most the most important project, the largest projects. They also looked at the most active people. They removed all the people that were less active, and all this thing made that actually it was it became impossible to find the product to find the product reverse. So it means that actually the way they were uh, they, they were uh, massaging their data made them. I, I don't think they made it made it on purpose. I'm not going to blame them saying that they were trafficking the data. It's not what I'm saying. It's more that I think at some point they got to think that it was a good way to do that. And then they came to, they came to different results and I'm sure they published and challenged us on good faith. So I'm not, I'm not, we're not discussing integrity here, but uh, it's important to, to see that actually when you consider a system, you should consider it as a whole, or at least consider a, a, like a, 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 a representative, a representative um, a sample of this, pro, of this, uh, of the system to really get a good sense of what's going I, on. I have a remark also to you, Thomas, uh, because I've worked a bit on, on a lot of GitHub uh, repos as well. And actually what I did is that I checked them in time uh, how the coefficients change uh, in terms of the inequality distribution, for example, of, com of commits uh, of people. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And what you see is that it's not, we're, we're not at um, uh, 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 stationary distribution. Like these exponents change in time. Yes. One given repo. And so whether you look at it when it's still small or when a bit later it's, 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 it's a big team, it, you, you're not going to find the same exponents. And, and I was wondering actually if you had looked at the trajectory of the yeah. projects in the diagram that you showed us and are they converging towards this? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I feel pressed by time because my wife and my sons are waiting okay. for me for dinner. But, okay. but, uh, sure. but uh, no, no, it's okay. Uh, I, I show here on the slide uh, the actually the we looked at the the average uh, beta which means the the, the super linear exponent um, per project as a function of the number of people who were in the project uh, in, in logarithmic because actually there's a, 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 a scaling distribution of uh, of project size size and we find that indeed as the project gets larger actually this this effect of uh, mm -hmm. uh, of beta is actually decreasing yeah, so so uh, it's very clear, and that's also reason maybe the reason why we find uh, up there where you were saying, oh, maybe it's plateauing. Uh, uh, yeah. When for yes, I mean probably this is a uh, this is a uh, this is an effect, and actually the reason why the group of franchises have found found a negative uh, a negative uh, uh, an, um, an exponent smaller than one was not only due to to that, but probably because they were only taking the largest projects. They actually they were even less likely to find uh, projects with an exponent larger than 
larger than one. But this is not the only reason. The reason is because they made a, a selection bias that was probably a bit too strong. So yes, I mean, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, a very good point. Actually, as the project grows, we, we can quantify uh, to some extent, it's not high quality, uh, it's not really super strong statistic, statistically, but still it's okay. We can, we can find that, uh, that the, the, the distribution is, uh, is uh, the, the beta is decreasing. Yes. We cannot follow, I mean, if your question was, for if you take one project, can you follow the, can you follow the trajectory of the evolution of alpha? This is something I tried, which it's extremely hard because actually you, because there's not enough, um, there's usually not enough power to really, and there's a lot of heterogeneity in the projects that you, it makes it very hard to, to fit uh, the, the evolution of, of beta as a function of time for one project. But on average, we can, we can find some, some relationship. Yeah. Very good. Uh, I think it's 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 getting indeed late, and many people have other obligations. Uh, so I, I don't know if there were other messages you wanted to quickly say before reaching the end, or uh, do you have a, a last kind of key message you wanted to to give us, maybe? No, I'm uh, I'm I'm good. Uh, if there's one last question, I'm very happy to answer it. But otherwise, I think we should all go for dinner. Yeah. And, uh, Is there anyone from the crowd still attending that would like to ask Thomas a question? I I don't have a question. I just have a remark, which might uh, like I'll be very short. So like what you just said about selection bias introduced due to like pruning of the big. Uh, projects. I quite agree because like at least in Linux project they have this uh, benevolent dictator for life that's Linus Tolwoods who is the one who actually uh, put, like merges the commits. So like uh, sometimes uh, like it's a single person who makes sure to make a release. So like just mm -hmm. considering bigger project which a lot of them have these people like central people yeah i don't think that was a great uh thing to do that's all i just wanted to say that yeah this I is a, okay i can reply i think it's a very nice paradox that actually when open source is supposed to be self-governed but good projects they all get the, the benevolent the dictator linus Torvald is a kind of an extreme but whenever you get always a leader, so it, it looks like a project needs leadership. So necessarily, it's not necessarily dictatorship, but leadership. And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, any project that is sizable will have at least, uh, I mean, between one and three leaders. Uh, and uh, and this, is, uh, this is indeed, uh, this is indeed um, uh, a paradox because we all expect that open source should be something something completely self-governed, but this is not the case. It's not the case. Yeah. yeah. And that's a very, I think a question that has not been very, very much solved. It would be interesting like to test uh, quantitatively what's going on, maybe with networks, see like, okay, I, what is the, the position of this person? What makes, what makes this person so, so, uh, so important for the project? Um, and, and like yeah. recently, uh, the first person in your picture on the first slide, like I forgot his name, but the Free Software Foundation guy. Uh, Stalman. Yeah. yeah, he was out, like he was sort of like kicked out of MIT and every place like last year or something, I, I guess. And it was because uh, him saying something that people don't like, uh, some aut uh, calling autism or whatever. But like uh, the point was that he was the one who was the first person in your uh, like first picture in your slides and I'd see him as someone who like did the free software foundation actually go and he has been kicked out so some network effect is definitely going on. Yeah but I mean you know uh, people everyone is aging at some point and uh, I mean, yeah. you, can you can lose sanity over time but I think there's no no discussion that Richard Stallman is the father of open source. Uh, open source. I mean, uh, informally, like the formalization of open source as a license. This is the. This is a bright idea. Now, what he did and recently, and I mean, we had him at a, at a conference uh, last year in Geneva uh, over Skype. It was a catastrophe. I mean, the guy, I think, has. I mean, I, I guess he has lost some kind of uh, a few neurons somewhere. I'm sorry to <laughs> say that, but uh, but at some point we have to recognize that uh, you know when. When a good fruit has a, 
as mature a bit too much. I'm, I'm sorry to say that. Um, well, but I have but for, me is a, for me, he's a hero. We should just uh, remember as him as a, as a hero that, uh, that changed the face of the world in a, in a, in a, very, a very crucial way. So uh, I, I, I keep remembering him as this person will change the world. Um, at the time, yeah. it was not evident at all. Yeah. So great to, great to talk about Richard Stallman. I'm very passionate about that. <laughs> well, maybe uh, we can have more to ch chat about it later if you join the call. Anyway, no, sure. I'm I'm sorry I have to go. I'm going to my oh, wife is going to be really upset. Oh, like, you're welcome to the next journal clubs. Uh, there, there will not be one next week. It will be in two weeks. So, but you're sure. welcome. I, I can keep you updated with that. Actually, I would love to have you again. And I think you're bringing. Re it was really really interesting. It was. Uh, I, 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 I wish I had read that uh, four years ago and I'm no. stupid I didn't do that because uh, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's really, really good to see. So it's really good work. Uh, and yeah, come back again in those meetings, yeah. really invited. And we'll maybe probably at some point have separate meetings because I think there are some papers I'm working on that you would be uh, very uh, insightful on. So yeah. I think we might. Sure. Yeah, please send me the invites. I will do all I can to to join the, the journal club. I, I'm very uh, and as a listener, no, not as a as a, as a speaker. I'm, I was very honored to talk to you today, but I, I would love to to listen or maybe to present another paper I, I've not read before. Uh, very excited to 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 hang out with you. And uh, uh, Mark can also explain that we have actually a common project. So uh, I, I believe the journal club is a very nice way to. Yeah. to synchronize, uh, get to, 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 to sing together and to, so yes, I mean, uh, very happy to join. I'm, I cannot guarantee I can come each time, but, uh, but it's very exciting. So thank you, Mark, for invitation. And uh, uh, I hope I can join you um, anytime you, you, you organize as much as possible. Thank, thank you for your presentation. Take care. Have a, good, have a good night. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Bye. Have a good evening. Uh, for everyone, next time in two weeks. Bye. And it will be about recovery system uh, with Pedro, mostly Pedro presenting. Uh, I don't know if someone else is going to present. Uh, so more like about how do you create links? What have people designed to create links in the network? Uh, and so applied collective intelligence. Thanks all for attending, guys. Oh, uh, sorry, it was one hour too late. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Bye.